Welcome back to you. So while much of the world has a representative in Geneva right now for the UN-led conference on Syrian peace, the United Nations has barred Iran. Why? Because Iran won't support a transitional government to help end that country's war. But now, in no small irony, Secretary of State John Kerry appears to be opening the door to Iran's participation. A critical moment and great timing for an exclusive with the leader of Iran, President Hassan Rouhani. And that is what we have for you this morning. Joining us live from Switzerland is host of Fareed Zakaria's Z GPS, CNN's Fareed Zakaria himself. Fareed, great to have you. Great timing for this interview. Thank you so much, Chris. So, first, lay out for us the pros and cons of having Iran involved in the Syrian peace process. Well, the biggest pro by far, Chris, is that we have no leverage with the Syrians. This has been our problem from the start. We think there should be a political deal, some kind of negotiated settlement, maybe a transition to elections, maybe a ceasefire. Those are all great ideas. There's only one problem. We have no way of getting the Syrian government to agree to do it. There are only two countries that have any leverage with Syria, with Bashar al-Assad, the ruler of Syria, the Russians, and most importantly, the Iranians. And so having them in the, uh, on the, at the table, having them inside the tent, would have probably been a good idea because we have one more point of leverage that we could have used. Okay, so that's why it's important to have them in Geneva. But of course, the greater context is the entire U.S.-Iran ongoing negotiations. Now, we get a big development on that front. We have Kerry trying to push for their involvement. But at the same time, now, controversy surrounding what the deal is with Iran. You do an interview with the president. Uh, supposedly, they are going to greatly uh, scale back on what they make in terms of nuclear capabilities and he gives you a very different answer let's play that part of the interview so in the context of nuclear technology particularly of research and development and peaceful nuclear technology we will not accept any limitations and in accordance with the parliament law in the future we're going to need 20,000 megawatts of nuclear-produced electricity, and we're determined to obtain the nuclear fuel for the nuclear installation at the hands of our Iranian scientists. And we are going to follow on this path. So there will be no destruction of centrifuges, of existing centrifuges? Not under any circumstances. Not under any circumstances. I mean, Fareed, what is the deal? That's supposed to be the whole under, underpinning of moving forward from the United States perspective, is that they scale back, they dismantle all this stuff we've been hearing. How do you interpret what you just heard from the president? Well, I was as struck by it as you were, uh, Chris. This strikes me as a train wreck. This strikes me as potentially a huge obstacle because the Iranian conception of what the deal is going to look like and the American conception now look like they are miles apart. The Iranian conception seems to be they produce as much nuclear energy as they want but it is a civilian program and you can have as much monitoring and inspections as you want. The American position is that they have to very substantially scale back the enrichment of uranium and the production of centrifuges. Now for the first time you have the president of Iran unequivocally saying there will be no destruction of centrifuges. He also made clear in the interview with me that the two heavy water reactors would continue in operation. So this seems like, uh, you know, th this is still born. This, this negotiate, I'm not even quite sure why, what they're going to talk about if these are the opening positions. And it's very hard to walk back from as uh, uh, absolutist a position as the president of Iran laid out. And then we got this baffling response. Jim Shudo got it from a senior administration official saying, we expected that the Iranians would need to spin this for their domestic political purposes. We're not surprised they're doing that. There's a big difference between spinning what the deal is and saying there's no deal, isn't there? Well, and there are many ways, uh, you know this as well as I do, uh, Chris, there are many ways you could have answered that question which would have left room for maneuver. You mm -hmm. could have said, well, look, I'm not going to get into the negotiations right now. Or you could have said, we intend to maintain the capacity to produce 
enriched uranium. Or, you know, but I'm not going to discuss numbers with you. But what he said was, we will not destroy a, a single centrifuge. We will not shut down any reactor. And as I say, the American position is that there has to be some substantial rollback. The, the Americans are pretty clear that they know it won't go to zero. But they're, they're, they're also pretty clear that it cannot be what he was describing, which was all existing capacity and then continuing to build more in addition to what they have. It makes you wonder if the Iranians are spinning their people or the U.S. are spinning their people in terms of giving perceptions of the optics of what's going on here. Fareed, thank you very much for the insight. Uh, you should watch Fareed's entire interview with Iranian President Rouhani. It'll be on Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern on Fareed, Fareed Zakaria GPS. Very interesting uh, what Fareed gets the president of Iran to discuss in terms of what it means when Iranians say death to America. The answer may well surprise you. Kate?